Adobe Photoshop just released this new feature called Generative Fill, and it is amazing. I just tried it out today for the first time, really, and I'm super impressed because this is a problem that I have in restoring old photographs. This is an example that I'm going to use. I'm going to show you how it works. It's so crazy. It's insane. When there's a missing part of a photograph, such as with this one in the right bottom corner, that's really hard to replicate. You can do it, but it's not fun or easy, and it's not that great, to be honest with you. So what you can do now is you can make a selection. I'm going to make a selection here. And you want to overlap a little bit. Every video I've watched on this, they talk about that. You want to overlap a little bit on this. But you go and you select the area that you want to fill. And this little pop-up menu comes up. And the reason it comes up is because I have, under Windows, I have selected contextual taskbar. So you have to have that selected for that to come up. You can still do this without it, but this is just so fantastic. I, I love this a lot. This uh, toolbar is, is just great. I use it on other things because you can use it on a lot of other things. It's It gives you, if based on what you're you're doing, it gives you some options of things that you might want to do, like for example, contract your selection, smooth selection. I really like this contextual toolbar. In any case, for, th for this example, I'm going to say generative fill. Here in this little text field, you can put prompts in there that will have it create certain things for you. In my case, I'm not going to do that because I just want it to generate another arm in this photograph. I want it to make this corner filled in. So I'll just say generate. Takes a little bit of time, but I will say this. It's much faster than if you were to do this manually. And it gives you some options. It gives you variations. So that's the first bit variation. I don't like this all that well. This one's a little better. Uh, it, I would like this to be duplicated here. And this one's probably the best of it. But if you don't like any of those three, you just say, hey, generate. Again, it takes a little bit of time. And you get new options. This isn't so, so bad, actually. Here's another version. This is not good here. And here's another version. These are all on layers, so you can toggle them on and off. I made one previously that I thought was fairly good. Now, again, this is not exactly the same, but in all honesty, I can just copy this, clone it, flip clone this one and just have this little bit right here. This is really quite good for me. I, I you know, it, is it perfect? No, but it's very good. And I, I, this is such a time saver. I know it took a few, few seconds to generate these variations, but to do that manually, oh my goodness, it would be, I wouldn't even, I, actually, I would ignore this photograph probably, or I would crop out that whole arm entirely. And in this case, I don't have to do that. This is just, for me, a game changer. It's so helpful. There's other examples I'm gonna be playing with this. It just came out the last couple of days. So these are my negatives, but for customers, this is so great because you can really help people restore their family photos in a much better way now with this tool. It's just so fantastic. You know, they also have um, 
a neural filter that does restorative work, which is also very good. Photoshop is really stepping up to the plate and I could not be happier. I'm just going to show you what I was talking about with cloning parts of this onto this sleeve because it's decorative here. And so, and with the clone tool, bring this over here, you have the option of flipping it, the image. So I created another layer that I'm going to put this clone on. I'm going to clone from here and I'm going to put it here and you can see what it does. So I can replicate that over onto the other side. So even though I didn't create that, I can do that. And if you can see, I'm going to put a mask on this layer and I'm going to mask out what I don't want on the clone. So that's not bad, actually. I could manipulate it a little bit more by selecting it and kind of turning it a little bit like that. And that's not bad, actually. That's not bad. And so between what it's done with the generative fill and then the clone stamp to replicate some of the embellishment on her right sleeve, onto her left sleeve. That's pretty good. So here's without the clone. Okay, I could mask it a little bit better. I'll, I'll do that before I close out. And here is without the generative fill. And so you can see, here's the generative fill. Did a pretty good job. That's <laughs> pretty good. And by cloning this embellishment on the sleeve onto the other sleeve, done a remarkable job this is this is something i'm ready to work on clean it up and uh, it's good to go so adobe has come up with some very remarkable things here and i can't wait to play with this a little bit more uh, it's going to be a lot of fun this is a game changer for me as a restorer it's a game changer for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons but this is huge for me and for any restorer out there they're gonna love this because this makes their job a lot easier so i hope you enjoyed this